Hello, in this video, you're gonna see me do a coding challenge where I make this visualization. So this is a visualization of the Rekamon number sequence. I'll talk about what that number sequence is, how it works, and then write the code to draw this using JavaScript in the P5 library. This is all thanks to and inspired by a number file video, which I will uh, also reference and you can find links to in the video description. So, oh no, apparently it's spooky. <laughs> So, ah, look at those scary circles. I'm running away, enjoy the coding challenge. All right, so the idea for this coding challenge originates from this wonderful number file video about this thing called the Rekamon sequence. Now the Rekamon sequence is a numeric sequence, a sequence of numbers. And I am the kind of person who really likes, I keep a book that just has lots of million random numbers in and around. It soothes me, it, so it, sooth it soothes me, it soothes me at nighttime when I'm feeling stressed or anxious just to read some random numbers. Um, and so this particular number sequence is a fascinating one. It's invented by um, a Colombian mathematician named Bernardo Recaman Santos. Um, and you can find out more about it at the, guess what? There's a website, which is actually the online encyclopedia of integer sequences. And I think now possibly for the rest of my life, I'm just gonna be at home <laughs> browsing this website. <laughs> Oh my God, it's a whole website dedicated. I can't believe I didn't really know about this till now. So here's the thing. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into the background of this numeric sequence or number sequences. I definitely recommend that you also check out the number file video. I'm really just gonna try to code it and visualize it. That's what I'm gonna do in this video. I'm gonna do it in JavaScript. And if I'm feeling a little saucy afterwards, I might, I might, uh, do a video where we try to make something musical out of the number sequence. So anyway, okay, so what, how does that, let me first attempt to just describe to you what the number sequence is. Now, first of all, a number sequence is just exactly that, a sequence of numbers, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a integer sequence counting up by one. There's the Fibonacci sequence, one, one, two, three, five, Eight, right, where you add the two numbers before and get the next number. So maybe you want to pause this video right now and invent your own number sequence. This particular, this Rekamon uh, number sequence is uh, particularly beautiful and interesting as a, a kind of this strange balance between order and chaos. So, you know, anything that has a nice, a, a, this dialectic quality of having both order and chaos is always fascinating to visualize. Well, mostly always, I think. All right, so let's say we have a number line. And I'm really just uh, regurgitating here a bit of the explanation that is in the number file video in my own words, probably not nearly as well. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And this can, in theory, go on to infinity. Apologies, there's a little glare there, but I think everything's going to be fine. <laughs> All right, now let's say I have a counter. And that counter is going to start at 1. The idea here, and it's going to go up, two, three, four, five, six. Now, for every number in the counter, I'm going to try to go backwards. But if I, if I so I'm gonna start somewhere, I'm gonna start right here, and I'm going to attempt to go backwards. If I can go backwards by this number of spaces and land somewhere that hasn't been landed on before, great, I'm gonna go there. If not, I'm gonna go forward. This seems weird. And I don't even know if that explanation made sense, but it's going to make sense to you if you keep watching, I hope, I think. All right, so one, I'm gonna to try to go backwards. Oh, there's no spot, there's no negative numbers in the sequence. So I can't go backwards, I'm gonna go forwards. I'm gonna to go to here. So my sequence is now zero, one. Now, I'm going to go, I'm gonna to try to go backwards by two. One, two, oh, no, I can't, so I need to go forwards by two. So I'm gonna go here, three. Now I'm gonna to try to go backwards by three. One, two, three, oh no, that spot is taken. That spot's taken, I can't go there. I'm going to go one, two, three, forward. Okay. Now I'm gonna to try to go back four. One, two, three, hey, guess what? Guess what, this spot is open, so I can go backwards four. Now in the visualization of it, I'm going to want to draw the moving backwards below it. Now this is an arbitrary decision. It's sort of the common way to visualize this sequence. It's certainly what's done in the number file video. The point of me showing this to you is to code it, but you might invent your own way of visualizing this. But I can go back four now. By the way, I forgot to keep updating this. Zero, one, three, six, 
two, and then now I'm going to go forward five. No, I'm going to try to go backwards five. I can't. There's nothing there, so I go forwards five. One, two, three, four, five. So now I go here. So we can see how this goes, and this is now. Now let's just double check. So so on and so forth. So I could, you know, I could keep doing this. It's going to be a bit easier for me to write a computer program to do this than for me to do this manually on the board. First of all, I really, really hope that I didn't botch this. So I'm going to go check the encyclopedia and see if this sequence matches what's there. Zero one three six two seven. Zero one three six two seven. All right, so let's begin it and write some actual code now. Uh, so here I am in a JavaScript program with the P5.js library loaded. Um, I, what do I need? So I need to keep track of, if I go back to this, I need to keep track of, you know, the number sequence would be nice to keep track of. I want to keep track of the counter, like what spot am I on? I need to keep track of which spots have been uh, landed on or not. All right, so I'm going to say let uh, numbers, this will be an array that's going to basically have um, a value in it, you know, something like this, for every spot that's been landed on. That's kind of my idea. So I'm going to have that. Then I'm going to, what else do I, did I say I needed? I needed a counter. That's going to start, the counter is going to start at one. Um, and I guess this could like have true in it to start because the zero spot by definition is what's been landed on at the beginning. Let's see, how is that? And then um, let me just say, what is the sequence? This will be the sequence. Um, so let's write, let's, let's write, um, let's use the fact that P5 loops automatically with the draw loop, but let's write a function called step. So, oh, and I need to keep track of where I am. So I guess I'm going to call that index because I think of it as the index into this array. And so actually what I'm going to do is at the beginning, I'm just going to say numbers index equals true because that's where I am. And every time I want to step, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say num index minus, or I'm going to say, I'm going to say uh, next equals index minus uh, count. This is me attempting to go backwards, right? And then I will say numbers, oh, I will say if numbers next, if it's been landed on or if next is uh, less than zero. If next is less than zero or if it's already been landed on, then uh, that is no good. <laughs> next needs to equal index plus count. And then I can simply say numbers next equals true because that's now a spot that I've landed on and the sequence I can add to it the value uh, next and then I can say index equals next. So let's do this for, and actually let me forget about draw for a second. Let's see if this algorithm works. Let's say for uh, let i equal zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus, step. Let's just do this 10 times and then say console.log. I'm sure I've made a mistake, the sequence. So this is my idea for the algorithm. We try to go backwards. If that is a negative number, it's no good. Or if it's a place that's already been landed on, then I need to go forwards. I need to set the forward spot to be true. I need to add that to the sequence. And now that's my new, my next spot. And so I suppose, in addition to saying numbers index, it, is zero technically the first number? That's the question. Uh, zero is the first number, so I also want to say a sequence dot push index in setup. So let's run this uh, code and see, is this the sequence? No, 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 no. <laughs> that is definitely wrong. 
<laughs> oh, I can see in the chat someone saying count didn't increment. So I forgot a really crucial step, right? The whole point of this is I go forward once, then I try, then and twice, then three times, then four times trying to go backwards. I was always, I didn't increment counter, so I was just going, you know, trying to go backwards once each time. It's never going to work. All right. Okay. Good mistake or good mistake to have. So I am now going to say, when do I want to do that? I guess right at the end, I just say count plus plus, right? I just want to, the next time I want two steps. That's probably like count, I don't know if is the right variable name for this. Could be like number of steps, but all right, now let's try this again. And let's see, 0, 1, 3, 6, 2, 7, 13, 20, 12, 21, 11. 0, 1, 3, 6, 2, 7, 13, 20, 12, 21, 11. The next one should be 22. Let's just double check this a little bit more and see if I've got 22. All right. Woohoo! I feel somewhat confident that I at least programmed an algorithm to generate that number sequence. So now we are ready to visualize it. Ooh, okay, this is the fun part, or that's all the fun part for me. I don't know, I don't know if any of it's the fun part for you. Um, all right, so let's think about this. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out of setup and I'm gonna put the step function in draw. And let's just say console.log index so we can see if this is kind of doing what I expected to do. Yes. So this is the sequence now. This is the Rickamon sequence just going and going and going. You can see the numbers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger over time because that count value is always increasing. All right. Um, okay. So uh, I'm going to take out this console log. Refresh. Now, what do I want to do? Now, each time I need to draw, right? What I want to do is draw an ellipse. Right, so let's say I'm trying to draw an arc, actually. Let's say I'm trying to draw this one here between three and six. Well, I know that the, I could use the ellipse function. Let's see, the ellipse function. And I need an x, a y, and a diameter. So the x, the y is gonna just be an, um, fixed. It's, I'm gonna do this, plot this on basically a horizontal number line. The x is going to be the 4.5, the start plus the end divided by two, right? The center and the diameter of this circle. Again, this is just a way to visualize it. Maybe you want to do it a totally different way. Um, the R uh, will be an ellipse with diameter of six minus three, the end, the, the next minus the start. So if we think about this, what I'm, what I, what's important here, if I'm going to do the drawing right here, uh, the diameter is next minus index, the x value is, um, sorry, the x value is, what did I say? Next plus index divided by two. This is assuming there's one pixel per, one pixel per number. And then uh, I could draw an ellipse. I'm just gonna draw a full ellipse now at x. The y, I'm just gonna set the y at zero and with this diameter. Okay, so let's see what happens. Uh, let me add a stroke of 255, no fill, and let me just see if um, what happens if these ellipses start appearing. And the other thing that I should probably do is write, um, is, oh, well, I should just make the Y the middle of the window, okay? So, and actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Well, that's fine, this is fine, this is fine. Okay, I'm gonna hit refresh, and we can see, okay, circles are appearing. So this, I think, this is already somewhat interesting that you can see this pattern that's emerging just from visualizing the, the recommend sequence on a number line between zero and 600. And eventually we won't see anything anymore because the numbers are getting way too big. But let's try to make this a little bit more interesting. Um, and so I actually misspoke earlier. Um, I had watched the number file video earlier today. And in some reason in my head, I was thinking if I'm going forward, I'm gonna go along the top. If I'm going backwards, I'm gonna go along the bottom. And I think actually what, what the, the, com, the standard visualization or the one that's in that video is just alternating. So I go forward, I go forward, I go, um, whoops, sorry, I go, so I'll take, I go forward above, then if I'm going forward, I go forward below, then if I'm going backwards. So it's always this, it's more of a continuous uh, loop. Um, so let me try to implement that. So one thing, first of all, is 
What if I just want to draw the top of the circle, the arc above the number line or below the number line? Well, this is actually an easy thing for me to do. I can just change to using the arc function instead of ellipse. I'm going to have to specify both the width and the height. But now, at the end of this, I get to have a start and an end angle. So if I say between 0 and 2 pi, that's between 0 and 360 degrees. That's the entire circle. So this, this should look exactly the same. But now, if I were to say just go from 0 to pi, we can see here, look, I'm always getting just the bottom. Now, if I were to go from pi down to 0, I am getting the top. So what I can do is I can say if uh, count modulus 2 equals 0, do it one way, otherwise do it the other way. And there's probably a more, there might be like a more elegant way of doing this, but this should be fine. So let's, I think I want to start, when the first one count is 1, and so that should be going, I think I want to do it this way. I want the first one to be over the top. So now we can see there we go. So this, I believe, should match precisely the circle starts with down up. <laughs> Someone's telling me. Okay, so uh, let's try, I mean, let's try with down up. <laughs> Once again, this should be precisely the algorithm the visualization that you find in that number file video. If I got something wrong, I'm sure I will hear about it in the comments. Please let me know. All right, so this probably should be the end of the video and I should be now giving you some exercises. But I kind of, so you should pause right now and try something if you're following along. Could you, what if, like right now this, I'm only seeing the results here because I'm layering each ellipse over and over again. But what if I want to animate or change the scale? Like what if I want to sort of shrink the space as I'm drawing more and more circles. I'm gonna to need to store all of these arcs in some sort of data structure. So I'm actually gonna do that right now just to add a little bit more to this video and then I'll give you some other ideas of things you could try to do at the end. So what I wanna to add to this is I wanna create another array. I'm just gonna call it arcs. And I'm actually going to create an arc class. I'm gonna use a little object-oriented programming. So what makes up a particular arc? Well, it has, um, it has a start, and it has an end, and it has a direction. Uh, so I'm going to say this.start equals start, uh, this.end equals end, and this.direction equals direction. So then all of this drawing thing, right, I could take all of this drawing stuff and put it in a function in the object called show. And the difference would be this would be saying this.end minus this dot start. Oh, you know what I should be doing? The end can be, oh, this is a little bit, this kind of worked by accident, but this should really be absolute value, right? Because the end could be before the start, and this would be a negative number. I think P5 doesn't really care. It's like, oh, negative diameter is the same as a positive diameter, but that's probably better for me to put this in here. Um, and then I'm just gonna say if uh, direction equals zero, I'll, I'll have the direction be zero or one. Um, X is also, this.n plus this.start divided by 2. Um, and so this should be good now. And so what I want to do here is create a arc between index and next with a direction that is, what did I say, count modulus 2. Okay, so this is what I want to create. I want to say arcs push a, and then in draw, I can now set the background in draw, and I'm just gonna say for let um, all the arcs, I'll just call it A of arcs, A dot show. So this should be, I did this kind of quickly, but basically it, uh, what I did is I just took the drawing code that I was doing kind of like live as the algorithm was going, and I encapsulated the idea of drawing one of these arcs in an object, and then I built up a big array of them. So now I have this big array, and every time through draw, I want to draw everything in that array. And this is going to allow probably you, if, okay, direction is not defined. Um, this has to be, <laughs> As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot. This that was not the sound clip, but uh, I forgot the this dot, obviously. 
Uh, all right, so this should be exactly what we had before, um, but here's the thing. Now, this is actually an animation. So let me try something. What I, I have this idea, which is I want to actually scale, uh, scale the visualization according to how far I am in the sequence. So for example, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually, I think it might help to draw the arc, everything centered around the, um, the, the, the left side of the uh, screen. So I'm going to draw the arc at zero. In draw, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say uh, translate zero height divided by two, and then I'm going to use scale. So the scale function, for example, if I were to say scale like five, that's going to draw everything at five times the size, at 500%. So you can see it's already like thicker and bigger at the start. If I were to say scale 0 0.1, you can see everything is really, really tiny now. It's being drawn at 10%. So what I want the scale to be, right? I have a window that is uh, 600 pixels wide. And so uh, that each pixel is one number in the number sequence. I want the whole number line. If I've done five numbers, I want that to be the width. So I think I can actually just say scale width divided by count. That should do it. Whoops. Yeah, so now you can see it is like live adjusting itself to how, what, how many numbers I've done so far. And let us, um, let me give myself, there's really no reason, let me give myself the full is this how I do this in P5? The full window width and height. And let me actually also say uh, style, uh, body. Oh boy, I do not know CSS. Margin zero, is that gonna do it? <laughs> I just don't wanna have uh, any uh, padding. Is, is the, does this colon go here? No colon, no colon. There we go, no colon. <laughs> Guess what? This video is not over yet. I realized in the chat I got the comment, which is I, I can't believe I didn't think of myself, which I, I uh, actually I can because I never think of these things. Where I really shouldn't be scaling to the um, to the where the in where the uh, count is. I should be scaling to what's the biggest number that's been uh, been part of the sequence so far. What is the end of one of these circles? Uh, I'm not actually seeing the full sequence right now. So if I go back into my code and I add something, which I just did, uh, if I have a variable called biggest equals zero, then what I can do is each time through step, I can check. It's basically if index is greater than the biggest number, then I want biggest to be that new index. And then here I want to scale not by the count, but by the biggest number. So let me add that in, hit refresh, and you can see now, ah, now I'm actually, this is what I meant to show you. This is now, I believe, the visualization that you will find in the number file video. So what can you do? I hope you will make your own creative twist on this. Um, you can think about different ways of visualizing this besides just arcs. Um, you could think about using color. You could think about putting this in 3D space. I mean, what would the z-axis mean in terms of visualizing this? Um, I would love to see it animate. Right now, it is currently just, you know, the stamp of each ellipse one at a time. Um, what if you drew animate the full of arc one at a time? What if you animate that arc? Um, so make those exciting different versions of them. Share them with me. Um, on Twitter, hashtag coding recommend. And there's also, uh, if you look at the coding train dot, the codingtrain.com webpage that's in this video's description, there's a place with instructions of how you can submit your own version of this there as well, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this coding challenge. Ah, I am going to come back in a moment and I'm gonna do one more version of this, but instead of visualizing it, I'm going to play it as musical notes. And those musical notes, are, um, will sound like something. I forgot what I was talking about. Um, this is also something that's in the number file video and I thought it'd be worth exploring the P5 sound library as well. All right. See you soon. <laughs>